slow down time to capture life's fleeting moments, shoot photos with that creamy bokeh background, and create your own personalized animated emoji. These are just some of the things you can do with Samsung's new Galaxy S9. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Match. Today, in Barcelona, Spain, Samsung unveiled its latest flagship, and over the last few days, we had a chance to play with it. This is our Samsung Galaxy S9 hands-on. So this is it, the Galaxy S9. I know what you're thinking. This looks just like last year's model. There are some subtle differences. It's actually a wee bit taller and narrower. Button placements are off by a few millimeters here and there. And if you look closely, the top and bottom chins are smaller as well. Also, if you flip the phone around, the position of the fingerprint sensor is different. Otherwise, it's the same phone on the outside. How do we feel about that? I actually don't mind. Samsung has settled on a sweet spot between great design and a signature look. Two years in, and it's still one of the most beautiful smartphones out there. Its all glass design is premium, still water resistant, and its curved infinity display is the best on a phone bar none. Like the S8, the S9 comes in two sizes, 5.8 and 6.2 inches. We'll put up the spec sheet now so you can see how they differ. The S9 Plus is the better of the two phones. It's got a second main camera, more memory, and a larger battery. If you look at the roster of the current best smartphones in the world today, one thing they all have in common is a great camera. In some ways, it's almost the tiebreaker which determines which among these phones is best among the best. Perhaps it comes as no surprise then that on the S9, building the best camera was Samsung's primary focus. It's what will set this phone apart from its predecessor and its competition. Let's throw some specs out there. A super fast f1.5 lens, the fastest we've seen on a smartphone. And the kind of lens you'll want when you're looking for great background blur and great photos even when there is hardly any available light. That lens is also an f2.4 lens. And with a feature called dual aperture, the lens adjusts between the two apertures to let in more light as needed. So when you need more light, it will shoot at f1.5, and when there is plenty of available light, it will switch to f2.4 so you get more detail and sharpness. The camera app does this automatically, but you can manually switch between the two when in pro mode. Speaking of camera modes, there's an oddball out, food mode. That gives your food shots a bit more saturation to make your food look more appealing. One very important thing worth pointing out is that of these two phones, only the larger model, the S9 Plus, has a dual camera. Two cameras means you get the same feature we saw on the Note 8 called Live Focus, which lets you adjust background blur during and after a photo is taken. This feature isn't available on the S9. On the S9 Plus also, because you have that second lens, you can zoom in two times on subjects. Here are more photos we took using the S9 and the S9 Plus. Unlike Samsung's 2018 premium mid-rangers, the A8 and A8 Plus, the S9 and the S9 Plus have only one selfie camera, not two. But software instead of hardware still allows you to take selfies with that beautiful blurry background effect. It's available via a feature called Selfie Focus. We took plenty of selfies and were impressed by the phone's ability to cut out subjects. There's also your standard selfie mode without background blur, but with a whole bunch of beauty filters that make it look like you're wearing makeup even if you don't have any on. We like how you can adjust the intensity of these effects so your makeup game is on point, but naturally. And if you'd like, you can dive into each effect to change things like lip color, eyeshadow, 
and contour. Take a look at more samples. Okay, so here's where it gets really exciting. One of the new things you can do on the Samsung Galaxy S9 is super slow-mo video capture. 960 frames per second to be exact. That's four times more than what the S8 could do. That means it can slow down time like this. So how does it work? On the S9, there are two ways to capture super slow-mo video. See this box over here? When you hit the record button, motion detectors go on standby and slow-mo capture starts automatically once motion is detected in the area designated by the box. It doesn't work for all shooting conditions, but you can switch to manual mode and manually trigger when you want slow-mo capture to begin. Trust me, it'll take a lot of practice to get your timing just right, but when you do, magic. Because AR stickers are the new trend that everyone seems to want to jump on, introducing Samsung AR emojis. On the S9, you can create emoji characters of yourself and your friends. Do this from the camera app. Swipe to get to AR emoji mode, tap create my emoji, then take a selfie. For best results, smile with your mouth closed. Select whether you're male or female, hit OK, and the phone will create your emoji. Once complete, you can also adjust things like skin tone, hairstyle, and customize your outfit. Now, not only do you have your own emoji, the S9 creates a whole bunch of animated stickers featuring your emoji. You can send these animated stickers from your favorite chat app. You can also find them in your gallery as an animated GIF. Another cool thing you can do is animate existing emojis along with some preset characters. From the AR emoji setting on the camera app, pick the emoji you want to animate and hit the record button. Imagine the emoji karaoke possibilities. Oh, and how accurate are the S9's renderings of people? Take a look at these selfies and their AR emoji counterparts. Some comments before we continue. The AR emojis don't always match the actual selfie taken, and sometimes when trying to animate them, they don't really match as well as, say, an emojis on the iPhone. Now, most of this video has centered on camera features, which is where really most of the changes are, but here are some other things worth checking out on the new S9. Our favorite is one which we think many Samsung fans will enjoy. Audio just got much better with AKG stereo speakers, one front firing from the earpiece and the other from its side through the usual speaker location. The resulting sound is louder and bolder. Take a listen. The S9 also has Dolby Atmos. This is great for more immersive sound when consuming content. This sample clip may not do it justice, but listen anyway. If you can't hear the difference, take it from us. We tried it and it works. On the S9, you got the usual host of security features, but now there's a setting called Intelligent Scan, which merges both facial recognition and its iris scanner for supposedly improved security performance in low light and outdoors when it's very bright also. Unlock speeds seem right about as fast as usual. 
Speaking of biometrics, up top we mentioned that the fingerprint sensor was in a new place. It's now below the camera. We like this layout better, but think it's still too close to the camera so it doesn't quite solve the problem of accidental smudges. Oh, and for those of you that care about color, there are new color options also, including this new purple shade that matches the Pantone color of the year. So, is the Samsung Galaxy S9 your gadget match? It's way too early to tell, but we promised we're working on a full review and that will be out really soon. I'll tell you this, however, even if the S9 doesn't have the same wow factor that the S8 did when it launched, Samsung has really set the bar high in 2018. But unfortunately, that also includes its high price tag. And that was our Samsung Galaxy S9 hands-on. For more videos like this one, you know the drill, folks. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow Gadget Match on social media, and make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. From here in Barcelona, Spain, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.